Meet the Matthewsons. They're a dynasty of dealers. It drives really well. With a love of classics. Ah, it's only condensation. In Thornton the Dale, gateway to the North York Moors, they auction over 2,000 rare vehicles every year. 42,000 the ready type, the stunning car. All walks of life. The cars fetch people together. I'm ecstatic. Head of the family, Derek. It's got to be the best job ever, isn't it? We're sort of living a dream. Trusted lieutenants, sons Paul. Not everybody's cup of tea. And Dave. There's Dad's way. And there's Dad's way. <laughs> Keeping them all in check and dealing with the punters, Sarah. Somebody could ring today with some fabulous vehicle that's been sat in a barn for 50 years. You have no clue. It's the chase, it's fine then. So you get up every morning thinking, what am I going to find today? This is a family's love affair with cars that have lived a life. Someone's cherished a car and loved it, and I think it's just great. I think it's absolutely superb. A passion that can be turned into brass. On sale this week. Barn find mini, we pulled it out of the barn ourselves. They're uh, sought after. Probably the rarest out of all the mini range. Rover P5B Coupe. Very nice, bit of classy car. And poor man's Rolls Royce, no doubt about that. The Douglas Mark V. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of oil in the cylinder. That's lovely. At Matthewson's, there's no such thing as a quiet week. We've got people ringing every day, emailing with photographs of vehicles. With over 200 lots in every auction, there's a constant stream of collections... Now then! ..valuations... I just get a gut feeling of what it will achieve, and it shouts like 20 to me. ..cataloguing... Trying to get stuff on the website. There's a lot of work to be done. And schmoozing right. of potential so, buyers. I'm losing interest now, so I'm going to be gone. <laughs> who sorts out sort of logistics of who goes where and how do you sort of plan what all this? What you this? need to understand, you're saying who sorts out logistics, right? You don't put sorts out and logistics in the same sentence at Matthewson's. It's like pinning a tail on the donkey. They blindfold each other and they go, where are we going to go today? There. And sure enough, at six o'clock on a Friday evening, Derek's about to make himself very unpopular. Right, uh, I'll ring the fella first, make sure it's OK. He's rounding the team up for a big job. Can we get that uh, jam jar picked up tonight? It's obviously good for business, but... It's just, um, it's a bit crazy. But the jam jar in question is a special one. Barn find, covered in all its glorious Yorkshire muck. Uh, well, we're just washing the trap, so we were hoping to get down fairly sharp. Uh, Jack, Jack's coming down, and uh, you'll be able to move the tractor, won't you, Paul? He's even trying to rope Charlie into it. Well, have a word with your mum and see if you can get down. If, if she bring you down, I'm here. We have to be sharp. Yeah, we're going shortly. Well, he likes coming on jobs like this. He's into that sort of thing. The barn is just outside Pickering. Inside, a rare 1982 mini pickup that hasn't seen the light of day for 20 years. It's owned by joiner Paul Metcalf. I bought it 25 years ago to use for work. To be honest, I'd have probably been better off with a minivan, but I always liked the pickups. 650 quid, I think it was. Entombed in dust and bird droppings, it's in perfect condition if you like restoring cars. Everything is original, including the engine and gearbox. It served me well for two or three years, no problems. 
just got a bit rusty. Drove it in here and here it has stayed ever since. Paul has minis in his blood. My granddad bought a brand new mini in 1962. I remember my dad getting it and I guess it was just inevitable when I got a car it would be a mini. Teal Blue 850. Rallied it, raced it, I've been on my honeymoon in it and I still have it today. For the car I came in, I've probably done over a hundred events in that. I wouldn't say I was somebody that was interested in cars, I just like minis. I'm a bike man. I think a mini is a motorbike with four wheels. He has several motorbikes and now he wants another. I did have a discussion with my wife. She said, yeah, you can get one, but something has to go. The farm where the pickup is stored is owned by Paul's mate, Dave. You're right, mate. <laughs> Good lad. Been in here forever, is it then? A long while. Is this uh, often the case that you have to shift one car before you get the car? Well, I shift a load of junk to get to something. Yeah, but not yeah. saying that the tractor's <laughs> junk. <laughs> but yeah, even the loo, an outside loo. Basically sound and solid, not so bad, but a poor looking thing that's had a massive life before it and then it's been just resting in this old, this old farm shed for years and years and now it's coming out to have another new life. I mean, the car should be very, very pleased with us really because I mean, two lives in a car. I mean, there's not many cars out there you can say of having two lives and only the classic stuff. It is tight. You know, we're, we're, we're preserving them, aren't we? They're uh, sought after. Probably the rarest out of all the mini range, favoured by a lot of milk delivery guys, which killed them because I mean every time they got back from delivering milk that day and that they washed them out and all the rest of it, so they were constantly wet. They just rotted away so quickly. Oh, sorry. How's it? There's one consolation doing this late pickup of a pickup. Dave gets to deploy his precision tool. The brakes are stuck on. You know they've rusted up, stuck on, and. Um, the vibrations of a attack with hammer, they very often just chop them off again, you know, just free them off. And after a successful extraction, a welcome surprise for Derek. Hey, you got a gold seal head, look. It has the optional higher quality engine. Tell you what, a good check round, flick the points, a little bit of petrol. Boom. I bet we could have that going in 20 minutes. Dave's slightly less enthusiastic. We're looking at a lot of work for someone. <laughs> Not me, <laughs> but somebody. Someone will get all excited about it, won't they? But someone's going to want to pick up the start from scratch and... I would hope. We hope so. It's how people want to find them. You know, they want to, want to see what they've got to start with, don't they? And, uh, I mean, the mini guys, keen, aren't they? They're loopy, really, you know, but let's be fair, they're keen lads. I think the newspapers have been going on a little bit about this so-called terminology barn find, you know, in other words, been in a shed for two years and all that sort of thing, but, you know, they couldn't argue with this one, could they? It's, um, it is 100%, no doubt about that. Minis from the 60s have been going for decent money at recent auctions. This one might be a bit younger, but there should still be a lot of interest. Hundreds of hours a year are spent washing and polishing cars to make them look their best. You can clean 500 quid onto a car if you do it properly. But in the showroom today, one appears to have slipped through the net. The Barn Fresh Mini Pickup from 1982. Whatever dust and muck is on it goes with it. It's not taking anything off. We want to sell it as it's found. You know, you could not be more honest about a barn find. Uh, that's how we dragged it out. There it is. You can't be any more honest than that. And this is the genuine barn find. And, um, but yeah, you'd have thought really you'd, it might have eaten through the bumper even and stuff like that, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't need harm, does it? It's quite amazing, really. And from what I can see of it, a lot of the panels will repair and save very easily. I mean, the wings, from what I can see, look good. No doubt it's going to want seals. Well, I've, I've been underneath it, but I'm sure it will do. But even the doors are sound. 
door repair quite easily. Repair panel in there, that's simple enough. So I think it's got the makings of a really good little motor. Uh, the pickups are so popular, so I can imagine this causing a lot of interest. It took most of the family to get the Mini out of the barn. I do realise how lucky I am to have two very, very, very capable lads. For Derek, though, it's not only about the car. Charlie and Jack uh, will remember that for the rest of their life, I would like to think. Like I remember things that I took part in when I was a lad, but my dad was like that. He involved us kids in whatever he was doing, and, uh, and it, does, it does form your character a bit, really, and you, know, you, can't, you can't forget them things because they were lovely days, you know, and, and you, you always think about them. Well, I think about them on a regular basis. I'll see something that, that, that makes me think. I'll see an old caravan being towed down the road, and it reminds me of us picking up one from, from Hertfordshire and taking it all the way down to, to St. Osith in, uh, in Essex on uh, the day off school, and it was the most fantastic occasion. And it, it'll always stay with me, and I think it's character building, things like that. I think it's very important, yeah. At the garage, some classic British summer weather. Cold, miserable, damp, mist, fog. Yeah, it's a bit grim, isn't it, really? I was going to come on my motorbike this morning and then I'm just about to get it out and I just glanced up and thought, ooh. It's usually sunny two days a year in Thartleydale. Once in May and then usually a day in October. Not today though, just chuck it now. It plays havoc with your hair. That's why Derek always looked a little bit bedraggled. And, perfect for a day like today, a car that embodies stiff upper lip resolve. This Rover P5B Coupe from 1971 would simply drop a gear and think of England. It's currently owned by Alan Walker from Scarborough. When I was a teenager at school, there used to be a few of them around, and I thought, oh, that's good, I like that. The chrome row style wheels, the shape of it, the burble from the exhaust. I thought, oh, that's, that's good stuff. Alan spent his youth tinkering with motorbikes, but in 1993, he was looking for a bigger challenge. This P5B was the obvious choice. It was up and running on the road, it looked quite nice from the other side of the road. Uh, <laughs> it, it drove. Um, but I could see it had problems. Uh, spent time here and there replacing body panels, sills, D posts, etc. All the things that tend to rust on those old girls. The renovation turned into an eight year obsession. When I look back, I think I spent too much time really. Hundreds and hundreds of hours it would add up to. All day on a Saturday or all day on a Sunday or a couple of hours in a couple of evenings. That kind of interspersed with normal daily life and family and all the rest of it. But if you enjoy the challenge, then that's part of it. Some people just like to go and buy a vehicle and drive it, and great. Um, others like to build them up and, uh, you know, do it that way. Today, Alan is delivering his car to Matthewson's. One last chance to wallow in the statesman-like luxury of the P5B, with the ancient V8 providing the soundtrack. P5B is a fairly practical car to drive. I mean, the brakes are good. The steering is very light. The engine runs fine. There's a kick-down facility on these old automatic gearboxes. So if you floor the accelerator, it drops down to the lowest gear it can pull at that speed. After all the effort of doing it up and 26 years of ownership, Alan knows this is the right time to sell. It spends most of its time in a, in a dehumidified garage, covered up to keep the dust off. Um, every now and again it'll come out and have a run and be checked over and so on, then it'll go back in the garage. So. I, the time's come, free up some space uh, and let someone have some enjoyment from the car.
Favoured by Prime Ministers and gangsters, the P5 looks good with a chauffeur up front whilst being chased by the Met. The heavy car needed a new, bigger engine to pull its weighty leather and wood package through Middle England and into high society. Rover left it late, but when it came, what an engine! A Buick V8 put the B into the P5. The old car lived on, and the engine never died. But after the 70s fuel crisis, plenty ended up banger racing. Now, P5 coupes are hard to find. They're a hipster hit and fetch a decent price. Right, here we have then, the, um, your Admiralty Blue Coupe. Right colour, isn't it? Admiralty Blue, silver birch roof. Yeah, right. And trim with being connolised. Yeah. yeah. Did a decent job, I think. They don't do so bad. They yeah, always yeah. look just a little bit done, don't they? Yeah, exactly. You know, um, as though you're going to be leaving your trousers in there and get out and, yeah. Um, I should have driven it since I redid it, that's the thing. Lovely, genuine old car. Absolutely yeah. the right spec, no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah. Bit wavery, isn't she? And the paint finish isn't as good as she could be. But you know that, don't you? Very saleable, very, very nice. Right model, right colour. Got yes. a good chance, and I think it'll do seven. Excellent. OK, OK. Um, if we can work on that basis, yeah. then I reckon we can do a deal. Right, let's do it. Does that do you? Happy. Sounds, you, me. Sounds good to me. It's the early morning of the day of the auction, and vital preparations are underway. What have you done to me today? <laughs> oh, God. Derek's preparing the hall. Ooh, yeah, we're away now. Yeah. Dave's fettling O'Reilly. <laughs> and must-have memorabilia is being road tested. But as the crowds gather, the serious business of picking up a bargain begins. And there's been a lot of calls about the mini pickup. I know. Yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't it good? Yeah. No, no, that's the thing. If you, <laughs> if you do want to know if you've been successful, then um, I suggest you give us a ring either sort of after five o'clock. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. He's really excited. He's really excited about bidding on a mini. He can't wait. He said it's like waiting for Christmas. The unwashed mini is starting to look like it might clean up at the auction. Very nice. Someone's found a good one there. I've always loved minis, always have. Well, it's in bad condition, but you can actually see that it's totally original rather than being done up to sell. It's an amazing find, to be honest. I haven't seen a mini pickup for years, and to see one with all this muck on it and everything is amazing. Just to see how it was found. I'm just looking for rat damage. I know where it's been. It's perfectly restorable. It's a good care overall. It's just having the finances to be able to do something like this because it'll be worth a lot of money when it's done. It'll be auctioned today without a reserve. It's anyone's guess how much it will go for. It'll make good money today, won't it? I'd say 10 grand plus. I would love to do it myself, but I don't think I'll have the money for this one. Two grand, three grand? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it fetch three or four grand. It's really strange because people turn up to look at things, but they keep it very, they, they play their cards close to the chest. It's like they don't want everyone to know what they're <clears throat> what they're looking at or thinking of bidding on. I don't know why. Lot number 49, she is. She's a 1982 barn find mini. We pulled it out of the barn ourselves. There's a phone bid and there's a submitted bid already. Start me on this. Where are we going to be? Three, three, one, three, two, three, three, three thousand, three, three thousand, three, four, three thousand, four. Got you. Three thousand, four. Going then. Three, four, three, five, three, six, three thousand, six, three, seven, three, seven, eight, three, nine, three, nine, four thousand, four, one at the very back. 4-2 standing, 4,002 standing there, 4,002, you're out the back, it's selling, 4-3 back in, 4-4, four, 4-4 four. Four, four behind you, sir, 4,004, going, 4,005, 4-6, 4,006, right at the back, 4,006, 4-7, 
standing here, 4748 behind you, 4800, 49, selling your bid, sir, 5000, it's not now, right in the very, very back, under the light, 51. 5-1 I've got, 5,100, mini pickup, 10 to 15,000 pound done. 5,100, stand in, 5,100, this side, you're out the back, 5-2, 5,003, 5,003 with you, you're out the very back, sir. 5,003, I'm worried about you, like I say, when you go home, you'll be worrying about it. 5,003, I fear for you. 5,003, stand in here, selling, outright, away she goes, 5,300, first, second, Third and last time, 5,300. Your sir, well done. Dealers Russell Walker and his dad, Tim, win the rare mini. Their first priority, removing 20 years of bird poo. You've just got to try and look past all the, the dirt and see what you can do to sort of add value, really. See if there's enough of the original car that you can just think, well, with a few bits and pieces, I can... I can make this into something. It does look like it is a fairly genuine example. It's not had many owners. The barn and the dry storage has probably saved it, really. But Russell quickly got another offer and decided to sell it on. And the next owners have big new plans for the small old Mini. Today, a rare motorbike has arrived at the garage, courtesy of owner David Walker. Take, take, pull it out of the doodah thing, eh? Derek is familiar with the Douglas Mark V. The last one I rode over here, uh, it stalled and I couldn't get the damn thing going again. And it was a bit of an embarrassment. But, um, it's a bit rider error, isn't it? Um, well, uh, I think it was newness on the bike's part, to be honest, John. It was just a little bit new, a little bit tight. It was a 1963, wasn't it? Yeah, it hadn't been used much. And it was just a, just a little bit tight. Someone got hold of it. This one, in polychromatic blue from 1950, is putting up a bit of a fight. Oh, we're all right here. We got, but we want to pull this one through. Can we pull it through? Oh, ah, you're all right. Don't panic. We got it here. Yeah. You got hold of it, Jack. I've got hold of the back. If you get hold of the front, go. If you and you know, I watch the back here. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, steady. Yeah, put her on a stand or something, or whatever you're going to yeah, do. Yeah, we Are we there? Well, yeah, go. I've got a Model 30, Have and you? I've got a First World War one. Someone nicked the seat off my Douglas, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. The real nice leather ones, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is why they nicked it. That's it. Oh, she's on. Sounds sweet enough, doesn't it? No, it's nice. Nice, isn't it? I bet they're lovely, them folks. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Well, try it. Is it rigid back end? Yeah. No, no. No? It's swinging arm? It's swinging arm. Oh, she's swinging arm, yeah. Wow, yeah. oh, that's unusual, isn't it? Swinging arm rear suspension, look, on a torsion bar. Yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? The smoke's clearing a bit now. Yeah, I fine. Oh, it will clear when you rev it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little, a little bit of oil in the cylinders, John, that's all. Nothing. Again, it's newness. Yeah, that's lovely. Switch her up, eh? Yeah. Yes, you're smashing. But, uh, no, it's lovely. And, and I'm pleased that we got the money right. It struck me as, like, four grand bike. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's nice. Recently restored, the Smoky Douglas is highly desirable. Less so back in the day. Just regarded as a little bit sort of old fashioned, old fellas' bikes. And, right to work? Yeah, right to work type bikes. And, uh, and you know, you've got a couple of them? Oh no, earlier ones. No, they were different then. They were had a lot more street cred when they were early, you know, 1920s and 30s Douglas. Good bike. Oh, that's all right then. Oh, that's all right. Good one, you not have any street cred. Super. Let's get it in out of the wet. See you later, pal. The Rover P5B Coupe is now tucked up in the garage. Very nice, bit of classy car. And poor man's Rolls Royce, no doubt about that. Its dignified presence has prompted a question. What defines a British car? I don't know. Well, a British car should really be gentlemanly, shouldn't it? For the English gen. 
don't you think? First and foremost, it can't be reliable. Very desirable, very comfy. It's got to break down on a regular basis. It's got to fail to start on a cold morning. Very user friendly, even by today's standards, you know, they're still comfortable. Uh, you can hold a conversation in them. Yeah, it's got to leak. There's just something special about them, isn't there? Just lovely. After its extensive renovation, the Rover is in fairly good shape. But there's still some work that could be done on it. We had a repaint done some years ago, and to be fair, they haven't finished it off properly. It doesn't want doing again, but it wants a really good flat and polish. And it just takes the paint off beautifully. It just takes a layer, a thin layer of paint off down to smooth paint. In other words, it smooths it out. It takes your orange peel out, simple as that. We now actually flat using a DA with 1500 and a soft pad DA, um, and, uh, and obviously a machine mop. For those not fluent in restoration, this involves a power tool with some fine sandpaper on it, followed by a good polish. Be warned, it can go wrong. Very carefully done, you have to do it extremely carefully, and you only do your main bit of your panel down, inch above that, inch below that, with a machine. Other than that, you do the rest of it by hand. I, I've done it on a car fairly recently, and you, you wouldn't believe how even the worst paint finish in the world can come up if you're careful with it, and as long as you've got enough paint on it. So I might just do a little corner on this, just to say to people, look, if you do it properly, that's how it's gonna come up. Auction day. Visitors from far and wide descend on Thornton Le Dale. Many hoping to satisfy their specialist interests with some rare memorabilia. Trucks just come through. Anything truck related made in Great Britain. What's that like, would you? Nice and relaxed. Nice people. And it's always a bargain. This is all old spotlights and it's got an old awning in there as well, like so old clacks and that really does make some noise. The oh so British Rover P5B is ready for inspection. Uh, I'm looking for what repairs have been done on the bodywork. I've already got one of these cars, so I, I know where to look really. <laughs> with the heavy mix of a good solid restoration behind it, but with some satisfying jobs still to be done, it makes this car an enticing project. Looks okay, very original. Uh, a few little minor things that might need attending to. The estimate on this car is eight to 10,000. If you could get it for that price, that would be good value. Rover P5B Coupe, 1971. Start me on it, where, whereabouts? No, I want six, six to start, six I've got. Six, 250, six, five, 6,750, seven. 7,000 on me left, seven, 250, seven, five. 7750 on my right, 7758. 8,250. 8,250 on my right and selling. 8,250 over here on my right. 8,5 back in. 8,750 on my right and selling. 8,750 last time looking round. Going, you're missing it. 8,750. 8,750 sold. Nigel Guite, the lucky winner. And a decent deal for previous owner Alan. Quite pleased with that. It'll pay for a motorbike I bought recently. <laughs> and that's it. Carry on playing with bikes now. I've got more room in the garage. Hello. Hello. Three hour five. Back to my yard in Sheffield and then into the workshop. Do anything that needs doing, get a general recommission. This particular one I do think is the flagship of the classic Rovers, if you like. A very nice finished car. Um, they were a luxury car in the day, Prime Minister's Adam, etc. Got it a little bit less than what I would have paid. So it went a bad day. It's eight o'clock, Sunday morning, the day after the auction. Which Friday was it? Mm. I just have to scroll through the website. Just... Everyone put in about 15 hours yesterday, but today is also looking like a long one. No, they mate, all right? Yeah, we're still waiting to hear from the vendors. I think you're a long, long way away on the Fiesta, um, and the gentleman's looking for 1500 on the scimitar. This is when many provisional offers are converted to sales through negotiation. He originally said that he would like £1,600 returning. If you can go another 150 quid, he'll let you have it. Derek would have liked to have stayed to help, 
but he has a pressing engagement. Well, it looks as though the deal's done. Yeah. Several times a year, Malton Motor Club, one of the oldest of its type in the country, meet in their hometown to worship ageing rally cars. Morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. And compete in a 140 mile timed event on some of Yorkshire's most challenging roads. So if you try and use your map, you will go wrong. So follow the Tulip Road book and you hopefully won't go wrong. Derek's the guest of honour. I've been roped in. You know, I'd like to rest the voice. The voice is quite uh, hoarse today. But uh, they've asked me to come down today. I've got to pick the, the nicest presented car, I think. That's the way they put it. I no doubt get myself in bother with that as well. But we'll see anyway. First up, a Bentley four and a half litre sports from 1936. Not your average rally car. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, very nice thing. Yeah, bonny looking motor. More of a gentleman's rally car, isn't it, really, that one? Huh? <laughs> Some of the cars are bringing back memories. That's what we used to rally, and my brother used to drive. I used to uh, maintain it. My brother was a really good driver. You never think so now, the way he pools about, but he was extremely good. And it's exactly what we had, uh, Cortina GT, exactly that motor, that done really well, very, very competitive. Won some good rallies. I'm proud to say never broke down once on one rally. So I must have looked after it fairly well, mustn't I? Another unusual car, Hunter GT. Quite a rare bit of kit, aren't they, really, these days? They were quite highly rated, really. The more Derek sees, the more likely he's going to insult someone by making the wrong decision. I'm just trying to pick something that A is presented nicely, B is pretty purposeful, and C is maybe a little unusual. You know? which I think is what it's all about, really. I mean, rallying started by using your own car, you know, your, your, your own everyday car. Like the Triumph of Darren's there, and little PV44, the little Volvo and such like. Uh, so it's really difficult, you know, I just keep getting drawn to that, that sunbeam, uh, that rapier somehow, I don't know quite why. So I don't know, one last sweep, I think. Hard job, this. You've got to think out the box, haven't you? I mean, a lot of people will come down here and they pick the Bentley, wouldn't they? Which is great, but... I admire that. I think it's rallying on a budget that appeals to me. I think you haven't got to have loads and loads of money if you, you know, if you want to in, in, enjoy a rally like this. And that is a cared for car as far as I can see. I, I just somehow just appeals to me. So I'm going to go for that one. Car 22. Just a bit of light flag waving now and Derek should be able to get off and rest his voice. Right, that's all we do, like, yeah. like on telly, let's hold yeah. it over and boom. I'll count them down, five, four, three, two, one. And then I lift it up and off they go. Good show, all the best. Many drivers here today know Derek well from coming to the auctions. Morning. Morning. I'm all right, fine, yeah. thanks, mate. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Right, well, you had an hour Ten and a half grand. Ten and a half grand. Tatty, like, very yeah, tatty, and, and no head. Right, here you go. Well done, mate, well done. Good luck. Crack on. Good luck. Take care. Bye-bye. Good morning. Sounds nice? Thank you. Hi. You're off. Nice talking to the guys from all over the country. I was amazed where some of the guys come from. Peterborough, a couple from Peterborough, Grimsby, not so far. But it just shows you how popular it is, this area. It's only the area that does it, really. It's a great rallying area. Supporting local clubs and events is part of being in the car community. What Derek won't do, though, is get an early night. He'll be at the evening do, presenting the trophy to the owner of the 1275 GT. After a busy weekend at the garage, there's now a few hours spare for some stock taking, and amongst the new memorabilia, a rare scrapbook. It's obviously from a guy that's extremely keen on Coventry Eagle motorcycles, starting from very early years, 1925, on through to 1950s. Absolutely amazing, an incredible bit of motorcycling history. All these little adverts he's cut out, 
Some of them for, from overseas newspapers advertising the Coventry Eagle. Can't even begin to read that. Looks like Russia or Poland or somewhere. Obviously a total fanatic, wasn't he? And you got to admire guys like that, haven't you, really? I mean, we look at them as being a bit odd, but they're great, aren't they? It's unclear who compiled the scrapbook, but there's a clue. It was found at an old bicycle factory in Birmingham. The Silent Superb, it's a 147, this one. A weight carrier par excellence, luxuriously equipped and costing only 23 pounds, 10 shillings. Now, when they say only 23 pounds, 10 shillings, in 1932, remember now, when most working men, like my dad, on the railway uh, in 1932, would have probably been on four quid a week, maybe, and possibly not even that. I love the, the scrapbook because it's so inclusive. It's a, a, an important part of motorcycle history. And on top of that, it's an also a very important part of social history. Um, and I think the two combined make very interesting reading. I think it's a wonderful lot that will be coming up at, uh, at auction. Over in Sheffield, the three and a half litre Rover P5B is bringing back memories for its new owner. The era I was brought up in, 70s and early 80s, you still saw them on the road, albeit you were buying them for a couple hundred pounders get to work cars. It's the newest member of Nigel Guite's nicely eccentric collection of tidy agricultural and commercial vehicles. Probably been collecting now for 20 plus years. It's quite an eclectic mix, isn't it? But this is basically a Rushton Proctor portable engine, um, sort of pre-traction engine. Would have been horse drawn into the field and then drove something like the threshing machine. We're kind of still at the point where we're working out what to do with this. Nigel is in the right place to breathe life back into any classic. He manages a 40 acre industrial engineering site with most of the required renovation bases covered. You can't do this on your own. You know, I'd want certifying if I had to go through this and I've got nobody to help me with it. Jim does all our engine work, as you can see. Currently working on a Rolls-Royce B60 engine. That's troublesome, but it's going into the workshop, so it might as well run. We've just done carbon on that Rover as well. That's transformed it. I'll hold you to that. <laughs> There's plenty of scope with this. It's a good foundation, you know, to start from. The P5B Coupe is probably the most desirable one. And in this colour as well, Admiralty Blue with a silver birch roof. It's, it's probably the right colour and the right car. To be honest, we don't buy them to make money. We buy them because we like them. Oh, it drives really well, really well. It does now, better than it was. It's quite responsive now. Previous owners obviously cared for it and he's, he's done a lot to it. The car is 80%. What I'd like to do is lift it that other 20%. So we'll, we'll look at panel gaps, a decent paint job, mechanicals, any structural issues, that kind of thing, any chroming work will be done. Just make it better than what it is. The passion is British engineering. We used to make things like this, we don't anymore. So keeping them around and preserving them, looking after them best you can. There's not like seeing one drive down the road. If you physically see what it was meant to do, it's far better than seeing it tucked away in a museum. As for the Coventry Eagle scrapbook, at the auction, Derek paid the ultimate compliment to its very dedicated curator. He's a proper anorak, but a lovely man, I would think. He's got every bit of information about Coventry Eagle motorbikes. It saw some healthy bidding. 50, 50, 60, 70, 70 pounds. Wonderful bit of kit, 70, 70 pounds. But it wasn't a simple ride into the sunset for the nicely restored Douglas Mark V. 3,008, come on, we're submitting 3,008. Is the nine anywhere? 3,800, last time looking round, worth more, 3,800, provisional only. Three eights, provisional 3,800. Not far off, but no sale. A few days later, enthusiast James Brown spotted potential and offered the four grand. But that's when his problems started. 
One day when I'd been for a ride, a young driver in a 4x4 nearly sent me to see him upstairs. When I got home, I explained to my wife and she said, get rid of it. When she says do something, I normally do it. James is still married. The Douglas sold for three and a half thousand that was shipped off to the next chapter in its long life in the Orkneys. I love them forks, look at them. They're beautiful, bang on, and they? I love that. Also a victim of the double sale, the mini pickup was sold on after the auction to James Priestley and Mark Bainton in Cleethorpes. And it's heading for a complete rebuild. We restore old cars, welding, painting, mechanicals, anything that old cars need. Currently in the workshop, vehicles manufactured any time from the 1950s to the 1980s. Full respray, and that's had wheel arches and wings on the Rover. 1960 PA Cresta, which is just everything. We've just put new floors in that. You can't buy the panels for those who are having to make all the panels. 59 MGA, that's been a body off. The chassis and engine is done for that. Jensen Interceptor, Series 2, full bare metal respray. The Mini has been dismantled, but there's a long way to go for Mark. This is the engine, what we've pulled out the car, as you can see. We'll send it off to an engineer's and they'll basically strip the engine down, let us know what problems have got. We'll probably end up re-ringing it in pistons. Even for a well-preserved example like this, corrosion has taken its toll. The usual places on these minis is around the headlights. You can see here, I only have to push it through, but all the headlights coming out on the outside here. The A panels is another area. This one's totally gone now. I'm gonna have to push it with my finger. Somebody's obviously repaired it, as you can see. Bit of fiberglass from probably 25, 30 years ago. And this is what we're up against. These days, with clean metal, new panels, we've got up-to-date MIG welders and TIG welders, and you get a really nice weld on them, and they're a lot stronger and safer. But there's trouble ahead. James wants to return the Mini to its factory spec. His business partner disagrees. Mark likes to um, put a twist on stuff, which I like to on certain stuff, but not when it's something like that. I'd like to put like a 1340 engine in it with twin carbs. You know, basically upgrade the suspension a little bit and put some nice big disc brakes on it and everything and some nice sexy wheels and just, just give it a little bit of a, of a hot rod touch. I'll win. Well, I'm the one who does all the work, so basically we'll see. I'll be winning the argument, there's no doubt about it. For the record, Mark didn't win the argument. And the end result? A score draw. <laughs>